Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Kristen McKnight. I work here at WGU in our Office of Career and Professional Development. I'm on our employer relations team. And we're the group that hosts these career quest sessions with our employer partners who are really located across the country. Really excited to bring you a great slate of these sessions this month and um, happy to be kicking it off this week with Special Asterna um, and Amber, who's gonna be talking about some of Special Asterna's current opportunities as well as their hiring process and a lot of different things about the organization. So Amber, thanks so much for joining. Thanks, Kristen. Super excited to be here. And just for a quick intro, my name is Amber Skinner. I am an inclusion specialist at Specialist Derna, and I oversee recruitment for our neurodiversity hiring programs. So I'm really looking forward to introducing Specialist Derna to you all today. So Specialist Derna is actually part of a global initiative with the goals of helping employers to increase the neurodiversity in their workforce. And we do this by breaking down a lot of the barriers that the neurodiverse population typically faces in a traditional recruitment process. We were actually started in Denmark by a man named Torkel, who has a son on the autism spectrum. He saw that he had a lot of great skills, but not the best employment prospects at the time. And so that is what led him to start the Specialist Sterna Foundation in 2004. So we're actually getting ready to celebrate our 20 year anniversary this month. And our mission is to enable 1 million jobs globally for neurodivergent individuals through transformation of the labor market. And we work towards this goal by helping our employer partners to adopt our inclusive methods for recruitment, assessment, and onboarding as their standard practice. And this is an ongoing mission that we are continuously building on. And as far as eligibility goes, anyone who self-identifies as neurodivergent and is facing barriers to employment as a result is eligible to participate in our program. And for purposes of our program, this includes self-identification with autism, ADHD or ADD, learning disabilities, intellectual disabilities, OCD or Tourette syndrome. Additionally, we ask applicants to confirm that they are open to receiving workplace support and guidance from our team during the first three months of employment. And we don't require any formal diagnosis or like documentation from a medical professional or anything like that to apply. We simply rely on self identification and there are no costs for candidates to participate in our program. So although we are a nonprofit employer, I always say at a high level, you can think of us as a recruitment firm that focuses exclusively on recruiting neurodivergent individuals because we partner with companies typically on the enterprise level to run their neurodiversity hiring initiatives and as a result, help them build neurodiverse teams. And this slide just shows some of the employer partners that we work with across North America. In the US specifically, some of the employer partners that we typically work with on a recurring basis um, include companies like Deloitte, BNY Mellon, and Goldman Sachs, I would say are the uh, top three, but we also have various other employer partnerships throughout the US. And most of our opportunities are going to be full time entry level positions. We have opportunities all across the US since we have employer partnerships all across the nation. And we occasionally recruit for remote and hybrid roles as well, if that's something that you're looking for. And we work in a variety of different job fields, including IT, cybersecurity, data analytics, uh, engineering, business, with, I would say those are the top sectors, and then we also work in various other fields. As you can see on this slide, um, it just shows some of the positions that we have filled in the past and that are likely to come up again in the future with our employer partners. 
And the roles that we fill are the same roles any neurotypical person would be in. Our program just provides a different route for neurodivergent individuals to get into those jobs. So overall, we're just here to bridge the gap between neurodivergent candidates and employers. And I'll explain our approach in more detail on the next slide. So during the first phase of our process, we meet with each employer partner to discuss their roles in detail and really just get an in-depth understanding of the skills and competencies that they're looking for before we begin recruitment. And when we begin recruitment, rather than the traditional resume and face-to-face -face interview format that you would typically see in a standard hiring process, we actually use a different kind of three-step process. So first you would um, apply on our site and fill out a questionnaire to help us learn more about your skills and your education, as well as your career goals and preferences and how you work best. Then qualified candidates are invited to participate in the assessment phase of our process. And this phase actually takes the place of a formal interview. So instead of inviting you to tell us about your job skills in a formal interview setting, we invite candidates to complete hands on projects to showcase your job specific skills and abilities. And the work that you complete during assessment makes up what we call a candidate profile. Then blind candidate profiles are presented to the employer partner for them to review and select the ones that are the best match for their role and team. And when I say blind, I just mean that they only have your first and last initials, no personal information. And this is just in an effort to eliminate the potential for any unintentional bias in the selection process. And we also have one on one meetings with every candidate during assessment to review your candidate profile together and, um, you know, provide recommendations just to make sure it is as strong as it can be before we present it to the employer partner. So we definitely provide support throughout that process. And finally, selected candidates participate in a temporary training period before transitioning to full time employment and the temporary training period, or sometimes it's referred to as an internship or an apprenticeship period, just depending on which employer we're working with. Um, it, it's typically just a few weeks. The time frame does vary and, and some of our employer partners don't require it at all, but just something to keep in mind. And during this temporary period, we make sure that your transition into the job is very smooth and help you get settled into your new role by providing our workplace support, which I will tell you about on the next slide. So we do provide workplace support and guidance to both the candidate and their manager to help set new hires up for success in their new role and workplace. And our workplace support specialists meet individually with each new hire to develop a plan together with you based on, you know, what your unique support needs are and what your goals are for your new workplace setting. Then we provide ongoing support during the entire onboarding process and until you are completely integrated into your new work environment. It's very individualized support. So, as I mentioned, it's just really based on each person's needs, but typically it just involves periodic check ins to see how things are going. Um, and those are virtual check ins. But of course, if any concerns arise at any point, your workplace support specialist is always there at any time to offer you guidance on how to you know, best navigate your situation in the workplace if needed. And as far as our current job opportunities go, we are currently partnered with Goldman Sachs to recruit for several exciting entry level opportunities. And these are going to be in finance and accounting, business operations, and then we have one in software engineering as well. These are all eight week internship opportunities that will start on June 3rd and can transition directly to full-time permanent employment with Goldman Sachs if selected. 
And um, as Kristen and I mentioned at the top of the meeting, the deadline is tomorrow. So please do get your applications in as soon as possible if you are potentially interested in any of these opportunities. But even if our current opportunities are not suitable for you at this time, don't worry, because we always have new opportunities coming up with our employer partners on a continual basis, and you can always join our talent pool. So this is the best way to stay informed on our future hiring initiatives because it registers you for our automatic job alerts. So you'll be notified anytime we announce new job opportunities in the future and can apply for any that you're interested interested in. Also, candidates in our talent pool receive access to IBM Skills Build, and I will dive more into that on the next slide. Um, and in, in addition to that, candidates in our talent pool also receive free access to our monthly talent newsletter and the virtual events that we host for our job seeker community. So we do try to provide some resources to support you with your employment search in the meantime of waiting for suitable opportunities through our program. And um, first being IBM Skills Build. So this is a digital training platform where our candidates can explore learning pathways and develop new skills at no cost. Um, and the platform offers recommended learning pathways. And these are the learning plans that our team curated um, in partnership with IBM, specifically based on the types of qualifications that we typically recruit for in our hiring initiatives. So I always recommend starting there if you're not sure you know, what you're interested in learning about, but you still have full access to the library of learning plans that IBM Skills Build offers. And it's a pretty vast library they have thousands of learning plans in various different topics so you can explore really anything that you're interested in and some of the learning plans also come with um, industry recognized certifications and like digital badges upon completion so it's a really great resource for upskilling and learning new about new topics and that is all I have for you today. So um, if you'd like to stay connected with us on social media, you can find us on LinkedIn and Facebook. This is where we post a lot of information about our hiring programs as well as other related news and upcoming events. Um, and if you have any questions or anything um, after the session today, you can always feel free to reach out to me via email. Um, but thank you all again so much for your time. And of course, happy to take any questions now as well. Yes, I see somebody has their hand up. So let me go ahead and Anthony, you can come off mute if you'd like. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right, yeah, I've been, um, I was just wondering, are the eight week internships, are those paid internships by chance? Yes, they are. Um, yeah, great question. Thank you for asking, Anthony. They are um, paid internships. It's typically um, like an hourly rate. And then if selected for full time employment, then, you, of course, you would be offered a, um, a full time salary at that point. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for your question. And another question that had come up in the chat was if the current roles are on location or remote. And so I put in the chat, they're on location um, and, or hybrid. There was one that was listed as hybrid, correct? Yes, thank you, Kristen. That is correct. Um, and just to clarify, the ones that are on location are going to be the ones in Salt Lake City. And then the one that is hybrid is going to be in New York. And it, uh, I believe, requires three days per week and then two days virtual or three days per week in office and two days virtual, if I'm not mistaken. Anthony, did you have another question? Let me. Um... Let me, I'm just going to give everybody permission to unmute themselves. Give me one second. Okay, no problem. Okay, you should be able to unmute yourself, everybody now. I, I'm sorry. Um, anyways, <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. All right. I was just wondering. Um, oh, shoot. 
I just had a question. Never mind. It just blanked. Don't worry about it. No problem. It. Happens <laughs> to me all the time. <laughs> no problem. I completely understand. And I believe someone requested the link to the job board. Um, I'm sure that this will probably it might be included in Kristen's follow up, but I am happy to go ahead and drop a link if that's helpful. Um, just one, one second. I threw the talent pool link um, okay. in there. Perfect. For you. Okay. Yeah. That is, thank you so much, Kristen. So, yeah, that actually is a great place to go. That will lead you to our job opportunities page where you can view and apply for anything we currently have. And it also covers a lot of key information that job seekers are um, usually interested in knowing about. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I, I'm actually um, neurodivergent myself, and I didn't even know special learning existed before I joined the internal team. So I'm really glad to have the opportunity to introduce special learning to you all today. Yes, and could you talk a little bit about like what that? Um, you know, instead of like a t traditional interview process, could you go into a little more detail about what that's like for candidates who are maybe being considered then for one of these roles? Yes, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. So, um, in place of where you would typically see an interview in a traditional hiring process, um, we invite candidates to our assessment phase. And the first thing that we invite candidates do, to do is complete a candidate profile, which it's all virtual. It's done through Google Docs. And um, the candidate profile covers a lot of great information about you, similar to information you would have in your resume. Um, but in addition to that, it'll also include work samples, which the criteria for is determined by the hiring manager. Um, and then sometimes it'll just include competency based questions that you can respond to in writing, uh, similar to those you would be asked in a formal interview, because of course, those are very helpful questions when determining if, if a candidate is a fit as well as for you to determine if their role is a fit for you. Um, but we just put them in writing to give you a more time to process your responses. Um, and so that's just a few examples of how you can showcase your skills and abilities rather than having to um, just sit in a formal interview and talk about them. And also, we do have one on one meetings with every candidate who is invited to assessment where we will walk through that candidate profile together and just really make sure that you're showcasing your skills and abilities the best that you can before we present it to the employer partner for them to review and make their selection decision. So that's what our assessment phase looks like um, in, in the phase, again, that kind of takes the place of, of an interview. Thanks. Yeah. A question that came through in the chat, is the home project that we need to build as part of the application process due at, tomorrow's deadline? No, thank you for asking that. So um, the way it works is the assessment phase is essentially the, the second step after the application phase. So um, during the application phase, we'll screen candidates' um, responses in your application. We ask candidates to self-report what your skill level is relevant to that job. And we just screen candidates based on the requirements that our employer partner um, requires to be successful in their role. And then candidates who um, best meet those requirements will be invited to move forward to the assessment. And that is when we would send you your candidate profile or you know the at-home project and we also provide you with um, usually 48 hours to complete that we'll provide you with a deadline um, so so yeah definitely not due at tomorrow's deadline yeah of course thank you for your question thomas i have a question yes so on the the current for the current openings What's here on the first page? Like that's that's what's available. That's all that's available. Yes, 
on our job opportunities page, that's what we currently have available. Um, you'll see some opportunities with Specialist Erna Canada as well as Specialist Erna USA. Um, and you should see the locations clearly marked so that you can differentiate. But we work um, pretty closely with Specialist Erna Canada under under the umbrella of Specialist Erna North America. Um, so just wanted to provide some context on that and also um, you know, please do keep in mind that that job opportunities page is continuously being updated with new opportunities as we announce new roles with our employer partners. Um, so I definitely recommend keeping an eye on it or um, joining our talent pool, because if you join our talent pool, then you'll be automatically notified by email um, so that you don't have to remember to continuously check our opportunities page if that helps. And to, to, in order to join the talent pool, do we have to what apply for the, the where it says talent pool, the specialist in talent? Yes, pool? Like that that's okay. The general application. Yes, exactly. It's um listed just like you know any other job opportunity, and it does have an application. It's just more general information to learn more about you rather than job specific skills. Um, so you can apply to our talent pool, and also if you know, if anyone applies to one of our job opportunities that we have listed, keep in mind, you don't have to join the talent pool in addition to that, because even if you submit a job specific application first, we'll send you a follow up questionnaire that is the talent pool application, and then we'll manually add you to our talent pool after you complete that so you can get connected with all of our resources. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And yep, that Kristen actually just dropped the link directly to the talent pool posting. Thank you, Kristen. So that'll take you right there. Yes, and I know we get emails a lot from specialists about those opportunities and I try whenever I see them to share them out with everybody. Um, but so about how often a year would you say though, Amber, you're posting, you know, getting these like initiatives with these larger companies, you have like yeah. these new hiring groups. Yeah, so it, it really does vary um, on, based on a couple different factors. So first and foremost, we we are susceptible to the market just as our employer partners are. So I just want to preface this by saying um, sometimes if our employer partners are not hiring and if they don't need roles they need to fill, you may notice it's a bit quiet on our side for a little while, but stay tuned because um, when things are going well, like it has been in 2024 so far, we usually, um, announce new roles every month or so, sometimes more frequently, sometimes less frequently. Um, but thankfully we have had our employer partners have reached out a lot in 2024. So um, for example, as soon as we wrap up this uh, cohort with Goldman Sachs, we are going to be announcing some other opportunities with Procter and Gamble and those will be um, IT internship positions and those um, probably will be posted within the next week or so. So sometimes it's back to back as well. It just really varies. So definitely joining that talent pool, making yes. sure you're getting your handshake emails, all of that super important to absolutely. stay in touch. Yes, absolutely. That is always like the first step I recommend to candidates is go ahead and join the talent pool so you can know what's coming down the pipeline. Yeah. And earlier in the presentation, you showed that slide. So when people get the recording, they can go and look. But I know in the years that I've worked from this side with specialist learner, there's such a variety of roles, like everything from yeah. internship for people with little experience to some more experienced hires even sometimes. So exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It, we do really have um, something almost for everyone. And I always say, um, I know it's not always easy, but I always say, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of waiting for the right opportunity for you to come up. Um, and most likely it will be coming up in the future. It just might take some time. So, um, so yeah, thank you for mentioning that, Kristen, because we do have quite a wide variety. And as far as the job categories go, we're also always, always, always trying to venture into new industries and create new employer partnerships. Um, 
for example, we had a pilot project with Johnson and Johnson in 2023 to recruit for manufacturing roles, which was super exciting because that was new for us. So um, you never know how things might change in the future. Absolutely. Seeing if I missed any questions. I don't see anything. So if you feel like you got all the information you need, feel free to jump off. Amber and I will hang out here for a little bit. I'll actually go ahead and end the recording too, so that if you have questions you wanna ask off the record, you are able to do so. But thank you all so much for joining and uh, I'll send out this recording as soon as I receive it so that you can go ahead and get your application in for these roles.